Now, the Hurricane Milton, obviously it could have been a lot worse, but for people who've lost family members or pets or homes, it was horrific. It's going to cost a lot of money. It's very interesting. These tornadoes on the east coast of Florida. I'll tell you what's interesting. Uh, Off the air, I would ask individuals, experts, and when this hurricane comes through on the west coast, uh, the east coast, what happens there? And we didn't get much input. Didn't get much input at all. But I seem to remember from past hurricanes, things do happen on the other coast when a hurricane kind of, not necessarily cuts all the way through, but starts working its way up the coast. Now, where our home is located, in Martin County, Florida, it turned out that there were a lot of little tornadoes. And same with Palm Beach County, just south of Martin County. Palm Beach Gardens. Uh, up near Stewart, Florida, in Martin County. Um, I told you on the air last night that somebody sent me a video of a tornado that actually went across A1A and I-95, which goes north-south or south-north, however you look at it, up the Florida coast. So far, they've been able to determine 10 people have died five of whom died from tornadoes. I suspect that number will go up in terms of the total number of people. Florida is very lucky to have this Governor DeSantis, the team that he has. I mean, they're in there now. They're cleaning up. They're opening the major roads. He's got all kinds of programs, all kinds of personnel on the scene. Uh, It's quite remarkable. I think he approaches it, and I don't know this, is almost a military operation. And I think that's very wise. And I have to say, when you compare this to the way Hurricane Helene was treated, particularly in North Carolina, you can see the difference between leadership and non-leadership. Every hurricane is not the same. Every situation is not the same. The mountain communities or the rural communities in western North Carolina, it's much harder to get to them. I do understand that. But I want to make something abundantly clear. Politics aside, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Secretary Mayorkas did not treat Hurricane Helene seriously enough, early enough. They did not focus on it. And that's why it was even a bigger disaster than it needed to be. That's why it was even a bigger disaster than it needed to be. And these personal attacks by Joe Biden, that Trump is un American, get a life, by Kamala Harris and so forth, this is just intended to camouflage their own incompetence, and I might add laziness. It's not a coincidence. It's not a mistake. He was there in Rehoboth Beach. He knew this hurricane was coming, the first one. And she was out there raising more money. She's got over a billion dollars now. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. In Hollywood and L.A. and Las Vegas. It was Neither was necessary. She didn't attend a single pre-hurricane meeting. I've told you this over and over again because I want to get it out there. Some people are starting to understand this. And so when they say it is misinformation to point these things out, and when they say you're, you're causing deaths to point these things out, and when they're saying you're causing people not to seek help when you point these things out, that is a lie. We have every right to criticize the government, and that includes this regime, when they fail the people of the United States. And that's exactly what they've done. Just like they've done on the border for four straight damn years, Of course it needs to be pointed out. Now more than ever, we have an election coming up. Oh, that you're playing politics. No. Now's the chance. You either change the government or you don't. She keeps talking about an opportunity economy. She keeps talking about turning the page. She keeps talking about the future. She keeps talking about joy. She's none of those things. None of those things matter to her. She's talking about herself, her future. She has absolutely nothing to offer this country. Nothing. 
And Biden has been a screw-up from the day he entered the Oval Office. A screw-up. With Afghanistan, with Russia and Ukraine, certainly with the Middle East and Israel, on the border, on the economy. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something you're not hearing today. Ready for this one? This is Associated Press. U.S. jobless claims had 258,000, the most in a year. Analysts point to Hurricane Helene and the Boeing strike. That's not it. Hurricane Helene just hit. That's not it. The Boeing strike? Well, we have strikes all the time. The fact of the matter is the economy is not recovering. <clears throat> the propaganda from the media in Washington and the Democrat Party, it's constant. It's constant. It's not reality. It's not what people feel. It's not what people know. U.S. jobless claims the most in a year. Got that? The most in a year. Then there's this that nobody's reporting. Inflation rises 2.4% in September above expectations. Above expectations. Inflation is still here. And it's going to get worse. Jobless claims are up the most in a year. The most in a year. And so you have core prices. Gasoline, food, things that you need. They're continuing to go up. Your incomes and your salaries and your pensions are not keeping up because of inflation. And that's the truth. High inflation has created severe financial pressures for most U.S. households, which are forced to pay more for everyday necessities like food and rent. Price hikes are particularly devastating for lower-income Americans because they tend to spend more of their already stretched paycheck on necessities and therefore have less flexibility to save. So who is it? Why is it that $1 billion comes into the Kamala Harris campaign? Those aren't small donations. And the political action committees, very wealthy people. What is it? I'm going to tell you what it is. Some people get extremely rich and even powerful as the government gets bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more centralized, like George Soros. George Soros just picked up 220 radio stations for a song. The FCC, the Democrats... They let him buy Audacity using over 25% foreign money. That sets off alarms at the FCC historically. There is a procedure in place that was put there for a reason. I have a national security review of this investment. They bypassed that. They eliminated it. And they handed him his 220 radio stations. That's why George Soros is a leftist. Because he's become a billionaire, a multi-billionaire at a big government, centralized police state leftism. He's not a capitalist. He's not a capitalist. So a lot of billionaires, they don't make money off of capitalism, off of market economics, because they've developed things or invented things. It always strikes me, there's so many billionaires, and you ask them what they do, and they say, finances. What does that mean? I don't even know what that is. Finances. You're so brilliant. You're advising people on how to invest. There's only so many ways to invest. But the Democrat Party is filled with what I call corporatists. These corporatists who live off of economic socialism, who live off of big government. They become the sugar daddies of the Democrat Party and the Democrat Party machine and the Democrat Party campaigns. That's what's going on. Kamala Harris does not have any capitalist, private sector, free market proposals. Still handing people $25,000, handing people $50,000, handing people student loan forgiveness. No. No. Economically, you'd be talking about tax cuts and regulatory cuts. She has no tax cuts or regulatory cuts on the table. She wants to nationalize health care. And if she's elected, that's exactly what they're going to push through. They want to destroy the Electoral College so they have all kinds of power. Why? Because there will be campaigns, and the campaigns will be in 11 blue states, mostly in the cities. None of us will have representation. That's why they want to eliminate the Electoral College, to destroy what is and what was 
a compromise at the beginning of this republic to make sure small states and large, heavily populated states and states not heavily populated, states that grow our food and find our oil aren't left out of the mix. So they want to destroy it. And they say, what's well, the popular vote? Don't you believe in the popular vote? No, not when it's mobocracy. Mobocracy. So they want to fix the system, and I don't mean reform it, fix it so they can never lose. They want to add Puerto Rico as a state and D.C. as a state. That's four Democrats. Fix the system so the Republicans can never win the Senate. They want to eliminate the filibuster. Why? So they can ram these things through just by having a one-time majority because you can't reverse these things. They want to destroy the independence of the Supreme Court, expand its numbers, and pack it with ideologues, turn it into a Politburo. They've already in many ways destroyed our voting system, and they want to destroy it even further. They want to eliminate what they call gerrymandering, which is a pejorative that's used for states. The Republicans control the state. They try and adjust every 10 years based on the census, the congressional districts. No, 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 no. They want to do it in a way where they never lose. Where they never lose. These people are about power, and I see Elon Musk has picked up on something I've been saying and writing about for years. What's happening right now, and by the way, I'm glad. I want people to repeat these things. I want people to understand them and think about them. That's a good thing. They want to create a party monopoly in the Democrat Party. I've written about it. The Democrat Party hates America. I've written about it in American Marxism. I've talked about it for 20-some years here and elsewhere. If they have the Monopoly Party, if they have the Monopoly Party like they do in California, they have elections statewide, but they don't really matter. You can see it happening in places like Illinois and others. My point is the Monopoly Party wants power. They're power-hungry. They want control. And the Democrat Party wants this power. And it wants this power to change America. To change the face of America, to change the culture of America, to change the economic system in America. And yes, go through the motions of voting, but have their masterminds, something they have dreamt about and written about for 120 years since the early progressives, the progeny of Marx, American Marxism. They want the so-called experts, the so-called masterminds to make the decision, oh, we'll go through the voting system, oh, yes, we'll go through it, but we'll make sure that only we win and that only we are empowered. We'll go through that system, big deal, what I call the Potemkin voting system, meaning phoning, phony, uh, phony. Well, sure, we'll go through that system. The borders are wide open. To reshape the electorate. That's a quote from the New York Times. It's something I've been saying for 20 years, and I've been attacked viciously. Oh, replacement theory. It's not a theory. It's reality. And AOC and Bernie Sanders said it. They don't realize they said it, but they said it. If we can beat Ted Cruz in Texas, we can turn Texas purple to blue. We'll control electoral politics for a generation. Actually, they'll control it forever. They know exactly what they're doing. This is what they're doing. This is who they are. So these multi-billionaires who become multi-multi-billionaires when the Democrats are in power. Look at Obama. He's worth a quarter of a billion dollars. Look at Gore. As dumb as they come, worth $200 million. How? They're rewarded. They're rewarded by the oligarchs and the billionaires and the corporatists when they leave office. It's a klepto society, if you will, where the rich and the rich and the super rich and rich. Look, I don't mind people getting rich legitimately. 